This video is going to introduce the IPFS BCH wallet consumer application. This is what we call a local backend and uh, it provides <clears throat> a local REST API for front-end developers. If you're a front-end developer, this is the only backend infrastructure that you need to run locally and what it will do is it will pipe uh, your REST API calls over IPFS to the global backend. So what it is, is it's a local REST API. So this is what your front end apps will call in order to talk to the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. And it provides access to the Bitcoin Cash blockchain and the other indexers like the SLP token indexer and the Fulcrum indexer. Uh, <clears throat> and it pipes those requests over IPFS to one of many global backends. So that's what's nice about this is if, uh, if a, a global backend goes down, you can easily switch to another global backend. Uh, and so it's very robust in that way. And there's less dependence on any one third party um, by using this type of architecture. Uh, it's the only infrastructure you need if you're a front-end dev, so everything else on cashstack.info that talks about the global uh, back-end, you can ignore all of that if you're a front-end dev and you just want to write applications for a web browser in React or phone apps. This is the only back-end infrastructure you need to know. And um, this app is controlled and configured by the PSF BCH wallet. This is our command line wallet. So I'm going to get into that. In fact, I'm going to jump right into several demos. So to, to install it, first of all, go to the GitHub uh, repository, which if you go to GitHub, it's under the Permissionless Software Foundation and the repository is IPFS BCH Wallet Consumer. There's directions in here on how to clone it and install dependencies, but it's the same as uh, everything else. You are gonna need uh, a Mongo database installed, um, and, and there's a script in there for that. Uh, let me shut this down. But this install Mongo script right there uh, if you don't already have Mongo database installed, that script will install it for you. On Ubuntu 20 and older, 22 still has a little bit of an issue, um, so I don't think this script will work with 22. Um, but otherwise, you just clone it like that, and then you go into the directory, which I'm already in, and go npm install to install dependencies. I've already done that. And if you don't have MongoDB installed, you'd run that install script to install Mongo. And again, this is on Ubuntu operating system, and I'm running Node 16 and npm 8. And uh, so the way to start it is you need, you need a copy of uh, IPFS on your computer. This uses a, a Go IPFS node and in a previous video about setting up uh, the, the development environment on Ubuntu uh, I, just, I showed how to install Go IPFS. Um, I'm running version 13 which is a little old um, but anyways uh, you run it with this uh, IPFS daemon command but you need to run it with the enable pub sub flag because pub sub is how uh, the the system communicates uh, it pipes all those rest api calls over ipfs so there i've got my go ipfs node running as a daemon and now uh, the ipfs bch wallet consumer can tap into that and there is this shell scripts directory in there and you can just run this local, if you have a Go IPFS node, you can just run this shell script and this will fire it up. So what it's doing is this is a, a COA, which is very similar to Express, so it's setting up a REST API. And then it's launching um, IPFS cord library to take control of that Go IPFS node. And it reaches out and finds all these different global backends. You can see it, it found a BCH wallet service and a pay to write database service. Um, so that's how you start it up. So now it's started, 
and now we can control it with the PSF BCH wallet. So there's there's other videos here on PCF <laughs> PSF BCH wallet. Uh, I encourage you if you have not to pull this up and check it out. Um, there's videos on how to install it, configure it, create NFTs and tokens, and of course you can see all the commands by running the help command. What we're going to focus on here are these um, these IPFS commands um, as well as the conf command. So um, what this is doing is this command line um, app is going to make a series of REST API calls over here and this will uh, manipulate uh, this this REST API server and we can switch backends and sort of check the health of the backends and uh, and browse the different backends that are available to us. So first of all um, we're also going to be using this wallet service and wallet service test. So first of all if you do the conf command these are all the different sort of configuration variables and we need to focus on the rest URL and interface settings. So if I go conf, so it's a key value pair. So K is key, V is value. So if I go dash K interface, that says that I am on the consumer API interface as opposed to the rest API, which would call full stack dot cash. Um, and so if you, if it's not set there already, you would issue v, the v command with uh, consumer API. And that would switch it to consumer API, API if it's not there already. Same with this um, rest, rest URL um, setting. So right now I have it on localhost 5005. The default is uh, free, uh, let's see. I'll just do it with um, the default is free BCH dot full stack dot cash. This taps into <clears throat> uh, so this this is how it will come out of the box with that service. And uh, so what you want to do is switch this over to localhost port five thousand five. That's the port that the BCH wallet consumer is running on. So now we're going to be talking to that. So if we run this wallet service command, it will list all the backends, the global backends, that the wallet consumer um, REST API can see. And so right now it can see four of them. Um, this is uh, eCash, so we don't want to use that. There's this one in Canada. Um, there's this one in Portland, Oregon. And there's this one in Anacortes, Washington. So we can select any of them. Right now it's talking to the eCash service so we don't want to do that so what you do is you use this dash s flag to select one of these ipfs ids so let's use um, the one in canada and if you wait a minute <clears throat> you can run that wallet service command and confirm that it was successful in switching over to it so we can see here, this is the one that's currently selected and it ends in JVZ, JVZ. So we are connected to the BC or the, the Canadian one. So now we need to make sure that that global backend is functional. So we can run wallet service test. And this will just run a series of commands of REST API commands uh, talking to that global backend. And it's just analyzing it for expected input, uh, re return values. And this will this is just a quick sort of smoke test to see if that global backend is functioning correctly. Um, it is. This is what it should look like when it succeeds. So now that I have um, I'm connected to a global backend with the command line app. I can do things like check the balances. Um, so I, it's reaching out through IPFS to the global backend to the blockchain and checking the balance of this wallet. It's got 83,000 Satoshis and five SLP tokens. So for example, that's, that's how you connect to a global backend. And if this global backend was having a bad day and it was down, like I said, you use that wallet service command to switch to one of these other global
global backend and you can keep you can keep running and uh, so that's how you sort of connect to it and um, and switch between different backends um, which allows you to start developing on your front end software some of these other commands I'll just touch on briefly they're not really super critical the conf command and those wallet service commands are the most important uh, these IPFS commands are really mostly just for debugging and interrogating the network um, so right there I'm listing all the circuit relays that this that this IPFS node can see and the circuit relays are used to pass that data around to different peers um, ultimately to the global backend um, so you can explore that if you want you can always run the dash dash help command to get detailed help for any of these commands um, for example like the wallet service command like that so now that we know how to install IPFS BCH wallet service and we know how to control it with the PSF BCH wallet command line app uh, let's now start tapping into it like this this video is intended for front-end developers who want to write apps um, like uh, wallet.fullstack.cache uh, how do you tap into this local resource um, with your local uh, code so I'm going to show how to configure minimal SLP wallet so for those who are unfamiliar with minimal SLP wallet it is a great uh, NPM package for quickly creating uh, a blockchain based application that talks to the Bitcoin Cash blockchain here's all the the features it has and um, in the permissionless software foundation github group there is this PSF JavaScript examples uh, directory and it has a bunch of examples for BCHJS uh, eCash uh, this minimal SLP wallet and the pay to write database so if we go into the minimal SLP wallet here are a bunch of examples um, and a little description about minimal SLP wallet I'm going to run this get mutable token data example which retrieves data about an SLP token and so I've got it in uh, my text editor here and here is where the minimal SLP wallet which I have included right here this is where it gets uh, instantiated and initialized and if you read the help there is a section in the readme about instantiating the library um, how to connect to web 2 infrastructure like full stack.cache and how to connect to web 3 infrastructure which is what we're going to do here by default it connects to this and you can see that right here and so I'm going to comment this out and replace it with localhost 5005 and that will have that way minimal SLP wallet library will talk to our local REST API uh, and use that so this is really helpful if that server goes down because there's no uptime guarantee for any of these backend servers so here I am in the example I'm already in that directory I've got this file in this directory so now I can run it and it's gonna get uh, I already have a token queued up here uh, it's gonna get information on that token Oh, let's see cannot read properties of immutable data interesting let's see this is this is good I, I'm, I like this when uh, things don't work out perfectly because it lets me show you how I go about debugging some of these things so we're talking to the Canadian server let's just switch over to the server in Portland Oregon and see if we get the same results okay JVZ no we're still talking to the Canadian one it might just need a minute to switch over 7k 7k okay so yeah we're talking to Portland now and again we can run the wallet service test just to make sure that uh, it seems like it's running okay
Okay, so we're talking to that back end, so let's try and rerun this example. There we go. It went through that time. So that's a perfect example. If, if for some reason one of the global backends is not behaving correctly, you can just switch to a different global backend. And this is all free. These global backends are run by um, PSF community members. And uh, so here we can get this uh, statistics on the token, that's Genesis data, the mutable data stored inside the token. So the person who created the token can edit this data and then the immutable data. So this can be as, big, as much data as anybody wants, but the immutable data can't be changed. Um, so this is so that's cool. Now we have all this information. We have a link to the icon for the token. Um, so in we we were able to pull this data from a global backend piped over IPFS to our local REST API, which is IPFS BCH Wallet Consumer, and then tap into that with this JavaScript uh, application. So that's how you could use this for really fast um, prototyping, but um, most front-end developers are going to want to work with React and in the web browser. So let's show how to do that. I'm going to use uh, BCH Wallet Web3 Android. So this is, um, if you're unfamiliar with that, uh, this is the app that's at wallet.fullstack.cache. So this is what we're going to bring up. Uh, this is talking to fullstack.cache, the Web2, but we're going to run our own local copy of this wallet, and we're going to... Um, connect to our local REST API running locally on our on our machine. But this is this is the web wallet. This is kind of what it looks like. Um, so I've already got, I'm already in this BCH web wallet directory and it's, it's on GitHub, uh, BCH wallet web three Android. Um, Cause this can also be compiled as an, as a native Android app. So there's directions here on an, how to install it. And hopefully you're watching this video on cashstack.info. There's this whole front end documentation section that uh, describes how to use it, what it does, how to build with it. Um, so in that directory, there is this config source config index file. And right here is where you select the default backend server that it's going to talk to. So I'm going to comment this out and replace it with localhost 5005. And that's going to get it to talk to uh, our local REST API as opposed to the one being provided by fullstack.cache. Uh, so now if I just go npm start, because I've already installed my dependencies, it'll launch the web wallet. You can see here that uh, the URL is localhost 3000. It automatically opens this up. It's loading the web wallet just as before. And if I open the developer tools and look at the network calls, I can see it is indeed calling localhost 5005. And if I look over here, you can see some of the re uh, responses from the REST API calls that are, that are being made. Um, so that's another way to sort of monitor it. But uh, yeah, so I've got this test app. I've, let's see, I've got five cents. Do I have any tokens in it? But now, yeah, I've got some weird, I don't even know what that is. Um, but uh, now I have a fully functional wallet that is running on my local machine um, that is ultimately talking to the blockchain through one of these global backends. And, uh, and, and this function, so right now it's using the default one that I set but you can also select any of these global backends. And that's the beauty of this app is uh, unlike a Web2 app, which will not work if its primary centralized server is down in the cloud, this web app can use one of many global backends. So if one goes down, it's not a big deal. Users can just select a different backend and their wallet keeps working. And if they're say all down, you, you can use this trick where you can run IPFS BCH wallet consumer either locally or in a local cloud and you can provide local resources uh, to yourself and to your community and that's the power of this this decentralized approach is uh, you you always have options uh, you, you 
there's nothing that's going to go ha down like GitHub or Amazon. If you're a developer, you've probably, or NPM, you've had these experiences where one of these services go down and then you're just stuck. Like you, nothing works. You can't get any work done. And that's the situation we're trying to avoid by providing all these redundant backends. And the key to tapping into them is this IPFS uh, BCH wallet service. Uh, <laughs> somewhere in here <laughs> IPFS BCH wallet consumer so um, that's what it is this is how you run it and um, this is the only back-end uh, infrastructure that you need if you're a front-end developer